What's up, everybody? I'm Randy, and today I'll show you how to install a short RAM intake on your Mazda Speed 3. Okay, now I got the camera situated. The first thing you're going to need is a 10 millimeter socket to take off the intercooler shroud. Once you've got the cover removed off of your intercooler, go ahead and start removing the air box. And you've got two clips, and then take a 10 millimeter and loosen this clamp. And then you want to go ahead and unplug your map sensor. Next, you can go ahead and remove this plastic tube here that was connected to the air box. It's got a little clip on it that you gotta pry up on both the top and the bottom, and then it slides out just like that. Next step is we're probably going to have to remove the battery and the battery box in order to get in there to get behind there to remove the stock plastic turbo inlet pipe. Now, once you got that out, go ahead and remove the bolts that are holding in the battery tray. Next step is to go ahead and, and remove the connectors for the ECU off the side of the battery box before you remove it. So the next thing we need to do is you have to remove these clips from the ECU so you can order to take out the battery box. So what you need to do is you have these clips in here and you also have these white bars over the top you have to press in on the clip with your finger while you lift this white bar it's kind of tight but I get my hand in there and it goes like so and it's always there we go and okay and once you get those unclipped they just pull out and after you get that you can go ahead and remove the battery box now that we have the battery box out of place the next thing you got to remove is this bracket right here I'm pointing to it you know I'm trying to show some light up so you guys can see get my hand out of the way but there's a bracket right here that these lines are attached to so you need to remove that with a 10 millimeter socket and get it out of the way.
And what we have here is the old intake pipe. This is the plastic turbo inlet pipe. And that is what we will be working on removing next. Next up, we need to disconnect uh, this hose right here. Get a set of pliers to get that off. hoses right there those connect to the boost control solenoid and you need to remove that one little hose at the back that's connected to the turbo inlet pipe now you want to use some pliers to remove that clip and then gently pry up on that because the plastic nipple has been known to break okay we're back and as you see I've already taken the top of my inner core off I was trying to get this done without taking it off but in the for safety, I removed it. I was really do not want to break that boost control solenoid. And also, um, I skimmed my knuckles, so, so I had to go in and fix that up. You know, what other channel on YouTube actually bleeds for you people? I'm saying. Okay. Come on, come on, in. All right, got it off. Hoi. Okay, there it is. Right, right there. Next step, there is a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the turbo inlet pipe. And that bolt's right there, you need to remove that next. To get the clamp off of the turbo inlet pipe, it is very far down in there. So you're going to need a long extension. Now the Quartz Sport Instructions recommends a 12 inch, a 12 inch extension, excuse me, and this when I cobble together is just about that size and it should be plenty for what we need to do. I think we got that. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This right here is the factory plastic turbo inlet pipe. And now we're gonna replace this. Now comes the fun part. I have the nice corkboard short ram intake and the first piece we're going to try installing is this new turbo inlet pipe with the new coupler and the new t-band clamps okay so now that we have the old turbo inlet pipe taken off we can start installing the new turbo inlet pipe so let's go ahead and take the pipe and fit it on back onto the turbo. Now you can't see it, but the turbo is nestled way back in there. It's very tight fitting. Goes in, let it focus, goes in. I now have this clamp, which is the one that's gonna tighten down onto the front of the turbo. I have that one set at an angle, so when I put this on, I'll be able to reach it with an extension and it won't be hard to tighten down. So I've got that back on there. See, I got that lined up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put that bolt right here. Put that bolt back on there to hold this in place while we start tightening things down.
In the porch board kit, you get some extra tubing, and this little piece right here is going to connect our new turbo inlet pipe to the boost control solenoid. This is where you're going to connect this hose to your boost control solenoid. Thankfully, they gave you plenty of extra hose, so you can use it like this or you can trim it down. I'm probably just going to use it like this to make it easier to remove next time. One end goes here. Just going to wrap this over. And put this one on that end. And There we go. Also included in the kit is this larger diameter tubing that's going to connect to this nipple on your turbo inlet pipe to the valve cover on your car. Now, I still have the old tube connected and I am going to have to remove this so I can replace this with this. I now have my tube coming from my valve cover connected to the throttle inlet pipe and I also got my boost controller solenoid to being connected. Um, probably now I can go ahead and cinch down that bolt and the next thing I will do is I will reinstall the top mounted intercooler so I can proceed to the next step. Got your top mount back on, got your circulator valve back on. We now need to connect the turbo inlet pipe to this using the tube that came off originally from the, the plastic inlet pipe. Next up, you're gonna take our intake elbow and a 6371 clamp, and we're gonna attach those to the turbo inlet pipe, but we're not gonna tighten this down yet. Now, after that's done, next step is we need to take the MAF off of your stock air box and apply it to the new math housing from Corksport. This is the new math housing from Corksport. As you see, it's designed for airflow. It's got an airflow straightener. And this is where you're going to install your map sensor. Now, on your stock air box, it came out with screws, but the Corksport unit uses, oh, give me a focus, uses these neat Allen heads. So make sure that you have an Allen wrench to put this together. As you can see, there is a little rubber grommet on here. You might want to put a little oil or some kind of lubricant on it to make it easier to get the slip into the housing. As you can see, just fits right together. Um, make sure that the connector side is pointing on the same side with the airflow to make it easier to plug in when you install it in the car. I'm gonna take this in one of these 8391 T-band clamps and install both of them in the car. Filter time. Now remember 
back earlier when I said we weren't gonna tighten this down, it's because we need that loose so we can adjust this a little bit to try to get this down lower into the engine compartment. Now, you can go ahead, hook your map sensor back up, and there. Now, the intake is installed. And from here on out, it's just a reverse procedure of the dismantling of the car. And now for the most important part, the startup. So there you have it. I finally got my Cork Sport Stage 2 SRI installed. It was a ton of work. I bled, <laughs> you know, but uh, totally worth it. Car sounds awesome. I can't wait to go take it for a test drive. So if you have any questions or comments about this build, go ahead, leave me something down below. I'll get back to you. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you really like what you saw and you want to see me do more mods to this car, go ahead, click the subscribe button. Make sure to click the little bell. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later.